Hey guys, so recently my Evo OSS broke down. I decided to send it back to Evo set quarters, but they got back to me saying that repairing the whole thing would be like getting a new Evo OSS. So I decided to just let it go and see if I can record the whole thing directly from my GoPro Hero 6's uh, built-in stabilization along with my Hero 4's audio. I bought a few things from Amazon uh, to add to this new recording rig, which is the Pinobo microphone. It's like a $20 microphone and the stuntman chest harness. So I'm going to show you guys the things that you guys are going to need to make this happen and then some footages from the trails here where I live. They're not exactly the most uh, technical trails in the world but it's got a few areas with single tracks and some beat up parts so I decided to just uh, apply some, some stress to the built-in uh, stabilization from the Hero 6 uh, on these areas and see how well it performs. So let's see the things that you guys are going to need. Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, in this section right here, you're gonna find the auto recording part of my rig. So what it is right now is a Hero 4. And I bought this uh, microphone from a company called Pinobo. I found that on Amazon. I cannot remember the exact model, but it was like 20 bucks. It's super lightweight and compact, and it's basically uh, like a very, like very uh, entry-level type of microphone. Uh, it's great if you just want to have a basic microphone, but one of the things that I found that might be an issue is that if you're going to go around the trails, you guys, you better be careful because if you hit it with some kind of an object like a, like a tree branch or anything like that, it's going to flip to the side. Also, the, the wind, it might uh, flip uh, their microphone also to the sides. Uh, it also comes with this frame, so it's got more area in here, more clearance, so you can put the mic jack easier. Uh, in comparison to the in-house GoPro's uh, open housing. So I also use for the batteries a mix of the GoPro's uh, in-house batteries along with the Wasabi um, batteries. And then it also comes with this, um, with this, um, the tool um, knockoff um, accessory. So this is for the thumb screws. So it's better to use this one since you've got more pressure uh, and a, and a better contact point than just your, your hands. Okay, so how do you plug your Pinovo microphone to the GoPro Hero 4? So actually the, the Pinovo microphone comes with, a, with, with the actual uh, adapter. So you just got the jack in here, like this. You got your Hero 4, you've got the mic jack in here. You just slide it in. And then I use my helmet for, the, for this section right here. Uh, I just slide it in. Uh, I grab a thumb screw and I just uh, screw it in. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as it is. So that's basically how you get your, at least my audio recording rig set up. Okay, so what about the video? So what I use right now is a GoPro Hero 6 with uh, the built-in electronic stabilization. So I usually go with either 4K at 30 frames per second or 1080p at 6 frames per second. Uh, so how do I clip this thing here? I get this stun SS harness due to its uh, its better stability in, uh, in comparison to the GoPro chesty. So it's got uh, like a tighter strap along with a more solid uh, center piece. Uh, in order to clip this thing here, I use this uh, piece that came with the stun SS harness. What I the reason that I use this one is just the standard of gravity. Uh, I've noticed that people would use extensions like the ball extensions that come with the with the other parts of the stun SS harness. What I do is that I just slide it down here in the center and I make it come out like this. And then I grab a tripod mount like this and then I just screw it in. Ah, it fell down. So, once I have it like this, I get my GoPro Hero 6 and I slide the thing like this. Okay, I usually put it upside down in a 45-ish degree uh, degree angle, and then I grab the thumb screw, and I just slide it in. Obviously, you have your apps in which you can just adjust the 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 angle. So this is just a like a general uh, setup. So this is how I use my recording uh, rig. Oh, by the way, uh, as an additional item, it could be considered optional. Uh, I bought this set of ND filters from this company called Freewell, also on Amazon. I'm going to put all of the items in the description below, so you can buy it on Amazon if you want to. 
So basically these are filters that you can put on top of your, um, your Hero 6's lens. And what it does is that depending on the conditions, weather, of where you live, you can actually regulate the brightness and all of the colors. So I live in a country that is super sunny and right now we're in spring. So I use the, uh, the brightest uh, filter to basically even, uh, even out all the things that surround me. So this is also a good consideration. You, you guys should buy a filter. It's basically uh, non-disruptive when it comes to mounting on a gimbal. So it should be good enough for you guys. Okay, so now that I showed you guys the things that I use whenever I go out and record, I'm going to show you guys the actual footage from the trails. Honestly, I've given the videos a bird's eye view, meaning that I'm going to be actually seeing the whole thing as we go in this video. So, from what I can tell, the actual setup without the gimbal works. It actually works super good, but it works if you're on a single track or on a fire road or a, uh, on a fairly uh, beat up trail. So on single tracks and fire roads, it works super smoothly. It actually feels like as if you were using a, a gimbal. But if you go through a more beat up terrain, that's where it uh, produces more stress and it basically uh, compromises the, the, the stabilization. So we're gonna watch the videos right now. Oh, before we go, two more things. About the stabilization, the best thing for you to do if you're gonna go without a gimbal is to engage more with the uh, attack position meaning you guys are gonna to have to stand up more than usual uh, for the arms and the knees to uh, neutralize the vibrations coming from the ground. So if you sit sit on your saddle and you go through that terrain, it's gonna, it's gonna be noticed. It's, you're gonna compromise the, the stabilization and you're gonna get a super shaky uh, footage. Also, uh, line selection. You gotta be more selective about the, the, the terrain that you go. So try to be a little bit uh, less aggressive than usual so that you don't compromise also the uh, civilization. So Let's go to the videos In this section right here, I decided to record without the Penobo microphone and use the GoPro stabilizer So this is a flat shell meaning that the footage uh, runs super smooth You guys are gonna be able to see a few bumps here and there in the next part of this video so in this other section right here, you're going to see me going down a slightly rocky section and the video still runs super smooth. In this other shot, I decided to head down with the Penobo microphone on and test it out in some windy conditions. This is a Panama Canal, so now we're going to go to the next shot. So one thing that I do whenever I'm going to go out and record is that I get a whistle and I sound it three times as loud as I can so that whenever I'm on post, I just uh, find those three picking sound waves coming from the Hero 6 and the Hero 4. I align them and it makes the sound mixing part easier. This is me going down a slightly rocky descent and as you guys may see it still runs smoothly as well as the audio. So. This, for a $20 microphone, I'm actually super satisfied for, um, for the way it performs. So for this shot, I was going down this gravel road and I was heading down a more open area, meaning that there was going to be more wind noise coming through. And although the sound is still legit, I can tell that the microphone was already moving to the sideways due to the fact that I was uh, going as fast as I could. On the way back, I noticed that I was being compromised most in terms of wind noise. So as you guys may see, I was trying to go as fast as I could to see how much I can break threshold with this microphone. So depending on where you're listening to this video, uh, it could be your phone or your laptop or you're using headphones, the sound may be different, but still sounds legit in my opinion. In this section, I was expecting the shot to be the most shaky, but surprisingly, it stays super stable. I'm going down the single track and I'm heading to the top and you guys can see that the shot's just super stable, as well as the sound still uh, being legit. It was in this section right here that I noticed that the stabilization got compromised the most, meaning that line of show is just essential and engaging in the attack position can help out. For this last shot, I decided to just head down a paved road to see how much noise it could take. shots that I got from last weekend and these are my takeaways. Honestly, if you're gonna go down a gravel road or a fire road, 
then don't get a gimbal. It's not that necessary. Just try to get the things that I mentioned uh, before. If you're gonna go down a trail that you know is gonna be super tacky, then yes, invest in a gimbal. Also, try to engage more with the attack position on your bike so that your arms and your knees help out a lot with the stabilization. Also, line of choice, be more selective and less aggressive and expect the video to not be perfect. Uh, it's just the way it is and we cannot do much about it. So if you got any questions or comments, leave it in the comments below. I'm gonna leave all the uh, links for the uh, things that I bought on Amazon so that you can get it. This is not, uh, this is not gonna be any uh, affiliate link, so uh, this is just uh, for your information. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys like the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.